I'm Enoch Fossum. And I'm Austin Ivey, and you're listening to the What About Therapy podcast. Mm-hmm. What about therapy? All right. Welcome to another episode. What episode? 63. 63. That was my football number. Ooh. Yeah. This is a special episode. Sophomore, junior year. It was 63. Um, and ninth grade year, too. It was uh, for a while Ooh. there. And I switched to 56 because the number. jersey was smaller. Because <laughs> <laughs> 56... <laughs> was a smaller jersey and i like the way that it looked anyways welcome to my football year football number episode eighth grade is when i peaked in my football career that's when we went to the super bowl (laughs) technically same not the super bowl (laughs) um the championship game for peewee football in the ucfc the utah county football conference (laughs) (laughs) and we lost (laughs) and we lost yeah that was sad cried a lot that day yeah at that game i drank too much water and because I was so nervous, I got cramps. And so I was out half the game just laying on my stomach oh, or sucks. laying on my back. I my dad that. was like pushing my knees to my chest and trying to like get the water diluted. The... Diluted. Yeah, yeah. Just out of there. And then uh, the first play I go in after being out for 10 minutes, a guy uh, throws the ball over my head. And I was on defense. And the guy I was guarding caught the ball. <laughs> unfortunate that's so sad <laughs> like a gain of 30 <laughs> oh man uh, oh well trauma Very well traumatic. today we're going to be talking about tra- tra- just kidding we're not talking about football trauma um we're talking about burnout yeah and um the many forms that it takes um some people might be aware of what it is it's a pretty commonly used word um just generally in the mental health word word <laughs> mental health world it's becoming yeah. more and more um not popular um, the awareness is growing about what it is, what it looks like, stuff like that. And today we thought we would talk about, um, broadly what burnout is in regards to a lot of different things like work relationships, um, just really generally what it is and what to look out for if you think you might be experiencing it. Yeah. There are a lot of companies now these days that are taking care of the employee's mental health and like they put a big stress on that. Like I've heard of several companies having like little seminars maybe a couple times a year on just mental health and how to avoid burnout and how to just take care of your overall well-being if you're sitting in a desk all day. Like Austin and I are here at uh, at the job we have currently. It's just a regular desk job. Mm-hmm. I guess it's not just a regular desk job. It's seriously the best job. But mm-hmm. uh, we're at a desk all day looking at a screen and it can be rough some days. And so taking care of your mental health and knowing what to do can be really helpful. Yeah, exactly. So. And um, the burnout typically is um, associated with a job or a career or just work in general. Yeah. Um, but it can be experienced in a lot of other circumstances and contexts other than just, you know, just work. It could be in relationships. It could be in um, like parenting and other aspects of your life, like school. Like I've experienced significant burnout with um, my schooling and just not wanting to do it anymore. And um, we'll kind of go into details of like what I mean by that. Uh, but getting right into it, we were pulling from an article from, man, I already forgot the name of the website, integrishealth.com, which I believe is a um, health care system somewhere. It's just like a... <laughs> somewhere. Uh, but it was a really, yeah, good art, yeah. um, really good resource on explaining what burnout is, and they did a really good job. So that's why we're using it as a uh, source, I guess. But we wanted to start off by using this resource to explain the difference between stress and burnout. They have a whole section in this article. And so I'm just going to read straight from it just here for a second. It says, don't confuse burnout with stress, though stress is having too much. Oh, don't confuse burnout with stress, though. Stress is having too much on your plate, too much work to handle, too many responsibilities, too many hours spent working. Burnout can be and is the opposite. You typically feel like you don't have enough, not enough motivation, not enough energy, or not enough care, or maybe not enough time. So stress can lead into burnout really easily, but stress is not burnout. Stress is maybe a symptom of burnout, but you can kind of see the um, the difference there. And what I like to um, what I like to picture when it comes to to burnout, um, if we can rather to stress, stress is like a for me the way I experience it is like a like a rag that's been twisted up and really tight. Or something mm-hmm. like a rubber band that's pulled really tight, and it's just kind of tense and a little bit uh, tightly wound, for lack of a better word. And burnout is like a, a candle that's been burned all the way down to the bottom. There's no more wax left. There's no more wick left. It's just a 
there's no more candle left or it's like a match that's been burned down to where your your fingers are holding it there's just nothing left besides a a charred piece of wood and for me that's the best way i've seen to visualize my burnout my burnout is just nothing left there's no more energy there's no more time there's no more motivation to do anything and so i like the way the article explains that yeah there's another analogy i've heard that i read recently uh, it starts by saying, if you drove a car, let's say you hopped in your car right now, and you had a road trip across the entire country, I don't know how long that is, a couple thousand miles, and you put your pedal to the floor for the entire duration of that ride, what would happen? And the answer would probably be, well, I don't think the engine would last that long across the entire country, and it would probably explode and then stop working. At the very least, you'd run out of gas <laughs> after about At the very miles. least, you'd run out of gas a lot quicker than you would if you just did mm-hmm. a consistent, a little bit slower speed limit. Cruise control. Speed. Yeah. And so the this article was saying, why would, if you wouldn't do that to your car, why would you do that to yourself? Mm-hmm. And that's where we get burnout. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So just having your foot down, going 100% all the time, or maybe... 200% all the time. Yeah. Way too much than what you're supposed to be going to. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Until there's nothing left. The Wick. John Wick. John Wick. Oh, man. <laughs> um, the next um, article paragraph is really good as well. It says, the same can be said about misinterpreting depression for burnout. Certain depression-related symptoms, such as exhaustion, difficulty performing tasks, can masquerade as burnout. In most cases, burnout is work-related. And, I mean, I disagree with that. Me and Enoch both talked about how we disagree with that. Yeah. It's very commonly associated with it because it happens very often with work. But like we said, it can be with school and relationships. So maybe you disregard that. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Anyways, because um, it, it can <laughs> it can really be anything, but it is very commonly yeah. associated with work because how um, stressful and how demanding a lot of jobs can be. Yeah, well, and just in how, how many people do work. You know, like not Majority everyone, yeah. not everyone is in a relationship and I mean, everyone does have family, but not everyone is around family all the time. Like they do or like mm-hmm. they are at work. Yeah. And so work takes the most, uh, most time on people's day to day. Besides life. sleeping, it's probably the most yeah. things people do most. Yeah. That's like why eight hours most... a day of, of work for most people. So yeah. In the United States at least. So yeah, that's, I think that's why it's commonly associated with that. Um, it goes on to say that depression, on the other hand, impacts every aspect of your life, the persistent feelings of hopelessness, hopelessness, worthlessness, and helplessness. Um, those also can be associated with burnout. Like, I mean, burnout can cause depression. Depression can cause burnout. Like, mm. it's all a loop. It's hard to differentiate, but there's no point in differentiating, in my opinion. If it's similar, um, take the same approaches, take whatever works for you. But we can kind of see that burnout is is very um, it's unique in the way that it presents itself. It's very... Um, it's it's important to distinguish it in the way that um, sometimes it can't be treated the same as other things. Like I just said, that to treat it the same way you would as something else, but it's important to understand where it's coming from. You have mm-hmm. to understand the source of the way you're feeling, and burnout is a, is a good source, not a good source. It's a common source of a lot of issues that people experience and they might not know that it is. I guess is what right. I was getting at. Right. And we've talked about this several times, how we need to treat the cause, not the symptoms. So if you are treating symptoms of burnout, which could be, things like depression depressive like symptoms and you just de- you just treat the depression then that's not really going to do anything for you in the mm-hmm. long run because you're not taking care of what needs to be done as far as work goes or that relationship goes whatever is causing that burnout for you it's just going to persist because you're not you're not taking that head on rather you're going around beating around the bush if you will and just taking whether that be medications or just treating the symptoms in general and not the cause. Yeah. It'd be like taking ibuprofen for a toothache that's caused by a cavity. Yeah, it's yeah. going to help. And there's nothing wrong with medication and other things. But um, if that's all you're doing, then you're never going to fully heal. And, I mean, taking pain medication is a huge part of healing with a lot of different physical injuries, right? But if that's all you're doing, we all know that what happens when we don't get treated for an injury that needs more than just time, right? So same thing yeah. here. And I guess speaking of symptoms... There's a nice little list of symptoms that gets provided by the uh, by the article. Oh yeah. So maybe we can go. I think this one is the Mayo Clinic because we do Mayo have Clinic. two articles here, and we'll list them down below as always. But yeah, I think this one's the Mayo Clinic. Perfect. Okay, so we can maybe go two by two here. Yeah. Let's cool. Do it. So first two here. Um, if you want to figure out if you have burnout, you can ask yourself these questions, and these are um, 
directly targeted at work because the Mayo Clinic article is talking about burnout with work, but you can, I mean, you can assume or you can see how you could ask the question differently to apply to your situation, but I'll just ask directly from the article what it says. It says, have you become cynical or critical at work? And then the next one is, do you drag yourself to work and have trouble getting started? So you can see how you could place work with school. Do you have, do you drag yourself to school? Do you drag yourself to your computer to do your assignments and have trouble getting started doing so? Mm -hmm. The next two here, have you become irritable or impatient with coworkers, customers, or clients? And again, insert significant other or teachers, peers, students, whatever it is. Do you lack the energy to be consistently productive? That's been a big one for me when I do experience burnout. I have no desire to do anything. Whereas a week prior, I was like, yeah, baby, let's go. And just worked super hard. And then the next week or two, or whenever the burnout hits, I'm like, uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, I feel that too. I have the time, but I'm not going to do it. I have the time, but not the desire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, I found that too, because like, I'll pr pretend that I don't have time, but I really know I do because I'm spending hours on TikTok or right. um, hours just watching a show with my wife, which is great, but it's not achieving the goals that I'm setting out to do. So yeah. me too. Uh, next two here, do you find it hard to concentrate? I have the hard time with that anyways. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's doubly hard when Double I'm burnt whammy. out. And the next one is, do you lack satisfaction from your achievements? And that was a surprise one to me because I've definitely felt that in the past. And until I read this article today, I didn't necessarily think that it was a, a common symptom associated with burnout, but I've definitely felt that. Like I would mm. take a quiz in school and get pretty good score on it or take an exam and I'd get kind of burnt out preparing for it. And then I'd get a fairly decent score, maybe like an A minus, like 95 out of a hundred type of thing. And I'm like, oh, well, nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, just got to prepare yeah. for the next one. Yeah. You nice. know, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, and that happens all the time for me when I'm really burnt out with school. So yeah. you might find that within yourself too. These next two, do you feel disillusioned about your job? And are you using food, drugs, or alcohol to feel better or to simply not feel? So are you coping with it in some other way? And coping can be can be done in a lot of ways. Not necessarily just food, drugs, or alcohol. It can be video games. It could be getting too much sleep. It could be... I mean, you get it, many different things. And if you think about it, you'll you'll be able to to pinpoint what you do to cope. I think we get too narrow-minded when it comes to coping mechanisms. Our mm -hmm. first thoughts go to drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. at least for me anyway. And so think about what you do in your life, whether that be go to TikTok or go to Instagram, go to social media. That's probably going to be one of the biggest, if not one of the biggest right now already, is social media just to cope and ignore and to, like the article says, not feel what you are currently feeling. So a way to get out of it. Absolutely. Last two here. Um, have your sleep habits changed? More or less sleep? Either way, both can be a symptom. And are you troubled by unexplained headaches, stomach or bowel problems, or other physical complaints that you can't necessarily find a source for? Um, that's the, the like psychosomatic disorder type of link that comes with a lot of stress and anxiety. You can start to have unexplainable somatic symptoms, somatic pain symptoms that you just can't figure out a source for. There's no probable cause or virus bacteria that's causing it or injury. So be aware of those. Do you have headaches that just come out of nowhere? Because that could be a symptom of burnout. So now we know the symptoms. We know a little bit of an idea of what it is. Um, the article that we first referred to has a like a five-phase construct at least like step by step of what it looks like as it develops in this burnout yeah. feeling. Um, and they're quite, uh, it's enlightening to understand how it can develop in a person. So we're going to go over that next here. So it starts out with the honeymoon phase. So let's say you start something new. Um, like in marriage, everyone commonly thinks of the honeymoon phase, like mm -hmm. oh, everything's perfect. Everything's great. There's a little bit of magic about the thing. So let's think of this in the light of work. Um, I don't know how other people feel about starting a new job, but there a new job, but there is a little bit of magic surrounding it. You have no idea how it's going to be. You've met with the manager and they make it sound amazing. Um, maybe sometimes it actually is. Sometimes it turns out not to be. Oftentimes it doesn't. Um, but you have a little optimism about it. optimism about it. There's magic. There's unknowability surrounding it, and it's kind of mm -hmm. a little exciting, mystical. You know, yeah. you don't know what's yeah. going to happen here. 
I mean, that's with a lot of things, a new relationship, starting school. Like, this is kind of exciting. This is new for me. And that's, that's with a lot of things. This, that doesn't even like lead into burnout. I think that's just generally just mm-hmm. because you feel that doesn't mean you're going to get burnt out, you know, <laughs> right. just be aware that that's like with most things, there's a honeymoon phase associated with it that uh, makes it kind of seem exciting. Yeah. And I love what the article says here. It says it's common to experience satisfaction that leads to periods of productivity and the ability to tap into your creative side. And so just because you're a creative genius doesn't mean you'll experience uh, burnout, but just know that this is something that you can experience burnout with because it's something new. You just start it. So if you did just start a new job or you did just get into a relationship, then be aware that burnout is possible. It's not guaranteed. And there was a, um, I don't know if it was in these articles or not, but there is a genetic factor that does come into play with burnout. So not everyone experiences burnout. Like Austin and I could do the same work every single day and I could get burnt out and he could keep going. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And so we're all different. Again, the biopsychosocial model, there's so many factors that play into this. So just because you get burnout and your coworker doesn't, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Anyway, little side tangent. Yeah. So number three now or two, two. Okay. Onset of stress phase. So like with everything else with the honeymoon phase, ask, I mean, it dwindles, it goes away. Um, and reality, I guess, starts to set in of what it's really going to be like. The mysticality goes away. Um, and I, I like what the article says here. It says, not every second of your day is stressful, but there are more frequent time when the stress takes over. As this, as, this, <laughs> as this stage begins, take notice of any physical or mental signs, the ones we just talked about earlier. You may start to focus, lose focus more easily or be less productive when completing tasks. Physically, you might feel more fa- fatigued and can start to, that fatigue can start to set in, making it difficult to, to work or to sleep, things like that. So... Maybe you start to feel like that candle who's been burning for a little bit too long or that match that's been burning a little bit too long or the car it's starting to, it's about halfway on, on its gas tank and it's been running for a while now. It needs a break. Be aware of how you're feeling. Maybe try to put in, like visualize how you're feeling to give you a better idea of what's really going on. Yeah. Number three here is the chronic stress phase. So we reach a point where the stress becomes more persistent or chronic as the pressure mounts, the stress is likely to be consistently affected that hmm, the stress is likely to consistently affect your work. Examples include feelings of apathy, not completing work on time, being late for work, or procrastinating during tasks. I've no, I, I've definitely had those feelings. That's for sure. Same. <laughs> um, number four, the burnout phase. There it is. Um, <laughs> speaking directly from it, from the article here, this phase is when you reach your limit and can no longer function as you normally would or would like to. Problems at work begin to consume you to the point where you obsess over them. That's an interesting point to make. Or it's to the point where it's an unhealthy um, relation to the problems at work rather than just like letting it slide off your back. Like it happens every day. You start to, like it starts to be a huge part of your life and you just can't let it go. At times you may feel numb and experience um, extreme self-doubt. Physical symptoms will also become intense leading to chronic headaches, stomach issues, and gastrointestinal problems. Friends and family members may also notice behavioral changes. So it gets to the point where other people are starting to notice these changes. Yeah, and the last phase here is the habitual burnout phase. So if left untreated, burnout can become a part of your everyday life and eventually lead to anxiety or depression. You can also begin to experience chronic, mental, and physical fatigue that prevents you from working. Your job status may be put in jeopardy if you continue on this path. And that's just because the... Burnout affects literally everything you do. You become less productive. You aren't as effective as you were when you first got hired. And it could put your job in jeopardy just because you're not doing what you're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not, you're not effective. So, yeah. If you are in any of these stages, then just start to be more mindful of what your day-to-day life is like and the symptoms or the feelings that you get that we did talk about. Like, what does that feel like for you? Because burnout's going to feel different for everyone. These stages or the symptoms aren't the same for everyone. So establish what you're feeling, establish where you're at, and then you can use those stages to kind of get a basic understanding of where you will be if nothing changes. 
Yeah. So if you are in the chronic stress phase in work, then just be aware that the burnout phase could happen. It could be right around the corner for you. And so maybe start to do things that, that will help. And that's something that we'll talk about later on as well. Yeah. So let's get into maybe some of the causes of job burnout. Um, we talked about what it looks like, differentiated between stress, the phases. Let's talk a little about a little bit about some of the environments or situations that can lead into it a little bit more commonly. I mean, this is something we can go back and forth on as well. Um, so the first one is a lack of control. So an ability to inf- influence or make just make decisions in general in your life. So if you have a strict boss at work or a strict code of conduct at work or maybe at school, maybe in a relationship where it's kind of controlled by the other person or just by outside influences maybe. That could be a huge contributor burnout and can lead to the an unnecessary amount of energy being put into that because you feel mm-hmm. like you're um you have to conform to someone else's ideals. And I feel like how that could definitely be a cause of burnout. Yeah, and the next one is the complete opposite. It's unclear job expectations. So if you're unaware or unclear of what's actually expected of you at work or your manager, your boss is unclear of what they want you to do, then that can actually be a sign of burnout as well, which is, or a cause Mm -hmm. of burnout, which is actually funny. That's the complete opposite. And I mean, that just reinforces that there are different, so many different causes of burnout for Mm -hmm. everyone. Like if there is a lack of control at work, Austin can get burnout and I could be like, I could thrive in it, you know, but Mm -hmm. if there's an unclear job expectation, then Austin can thrive and then I can have burnout. It's yeah. just, it's interesting. Shows how important it is to, um, like how, how common it is to have differences in, a, I guess, in our personalities and our temperaments that, like you were saying earlier, one thing could cause burnout in a coworker that should not make you feel bad because they're just different from you. I think that's a good yeah. good thing to bring up. Yeah. Because the next thing, it's quite similar, but it's a, a dysfunctional workplace dynamic. Again, you can change it to anything. Dysfunctional relationship dynamic, dysfunctional school dynamic, doesn't matter what it is. But um, you could feel that there's some type of unclear um, support system with like you don't know who your manager is or it's dysfunctional in the way that like it's like it says here, there could be a there could be an office bully or you feel undermined by your colleagues. Maybe it's hostile work environment where you don't feel safe where you're going either because of your maybe because your religion or some other personal status. You don't feel comfortable going in and that definitely could cause burnout because you're always on edge. Like what's going to happen here? It's just dysfunctional. Then we have extremes of activity. So, I mean, obviously, if there's so much stuff going on on a day-to-day basis and it's just super chaotic, then obviously that's something that you most likely will not, or at least something you'll struggle with to maintain the same amount of productivity as you would like the first day you start compared to a couple weeks on the road of working at that same Mm -hmm. intensity that the job requires of you. Yeah, absolutely. Next one here is a lack of social support. It says simply here, if you feel isolated at work and in your personal life, you might feel more stressed. There's no one there to to vent to, no one there to just feel like you have someone to go to. If I didn't have my wife, I would have quit school a year ago. Easy. Um, That just shows how important social support is. And we've talked about this a million times, but we're designed to go through life in concert with, with other people. And if you put that in the context of work, or burnout in general, of course it's going to happen if we don't have the support that we need. Yeah. The last one here is work life and balance. Obviously if you are working too much, if you're supposed to be working, let's say eight hours a day and you're technically off the clock, but you work several more hours and mm-hmm. you do that consistently, then that can lead to burnout. That doesn't mean that if you do that, you know, maybe once a month or so to catch up on work. If you are a manager, you have uh, a lot on your plate, you can maybe work over time for a day or so. But if you do that consistently, if you don't take time for yourself and you don't take time to spend time with other people like your family, your spouse, and to interact socially, then that can lead to burnout. And there's, and there's one other thing that I wanted to add in is like my own personal experience um, as another cause is an unhealthy relationship with work in general. And this is, again, mm-hmm. directly towards work. Um, and it kind of goes in with, like, work-life imbalance. But I feel like some people, just due to dysfunctional work environments or um, maybe dysfunctional managers in the past, they feel like they have to put everything into work all the time. Kind of mm-hmm. like that hustle-grind mentality. Yeah. Like, you got to put in the work, you know? First one in, last one out. Exactly. That type of mentality that you never... 
You never take time off. Like I'm the guy that never takes sick days because I'm I'm that guy. I don't need a sick day. I'm gonna work yeah. through it. Um, yeah. I, I don't need I don't need a vacation. I don't need time off. I'm gonna I'm gonna work through it. Like a really unhealthy relationship with the way that you relate to the time you spend at work. I've seen this a lot with myself. Like I don't need to take a day off. And um, like maybe I'll just do this on my lunch break instead of taking an hour off to go to the doctor. You know, like and asking for that time off. I'm just going to take my personal time that I usually relax to do this because that's what I do. You know, I'm a good employee. So I think we need to change the way that we relate to our job experience, specifically when it relates to work burnout, because no, I don't think anyone should be considered a better employee if they don't take time off. Right. I don't think that should be expected by employers and it should never be expected by the employee that they, they're worth at a company should not be linked to how much time they take off if it's appropriate of course mm-hmm. right if you have mm-hmm. a certain amount of time you can take off so anyone listening if you feel you have that mentality there's nothing wrong with you or like you're not wrong right it's just probably links from something in your past um but just be aware that um that you're worth more than that you know you're yeah. worth the time off you're worth taking the hour off to go to the doctor instead of doing it on your lunch break yeah you're, you're definitely worth that and it's completely appropriate for you to do so because Everyone deserves a little break. So don't let that be the cause of your burnout because you think that you're a better employee if you don't take time for you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And yet so many companies reward that kind of behavior yeah, of, disgusting. oh man, he's, <laughs> he's grinding, you know, he he's, hasn't had a day off in two years. Like, dude, like, okay, sure. That could actually, that could be good for you. Yeah, you know, again, like we said, not everyone experiences burnout, but for the vast majority of us, that that's unhealthy. You need to take time for yourself. And like Austin is saying, if that is you, if you are, you're a hustler, you're a grinder, baby, mm-hmm. you're, you're not wrong. That's just not, it, that's just unhelpful. Yeah. Really. And so remember, you're not wrong. You're not right. It's just, there's unhelpful versus helpful. Mm-hmm. So never taking a time off will be, is more unhelpful for the vast majority of people. And it is helpful. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, don't don't hustle too much, <laughs> especially yeah. if it negatively impacts you. Um, maybe we should just go um, right into handling this. How do we, yeah. how do we handle the burnout? Yep. Yep. There's some great um, ideas here. Uh, maybe we'll, I'm sure we'll off the cuff some of some stuff, but we're going to go based off of this. Starting at number one, um, handling job burnout, it says start with evaluating your options. It simply states that we should discuss specific concerns with our supervisor. So this is directly with work, but school, talk to your professors, talk to an advisor, relationships talk to your parent talk to your spouse of your specific concerns that are leading to this burnout yeah maybe you can work together to change expectations or reach compromises or solutions as the article says try to set goals for what must get done and what can wait or try to set goals maybe for how you can take time for yourself yeah so if you are experiencing burnout at work then talk to your manager about it Ask if there's maybe a different position that you could do that would maybe be be a bit more refreshing if you're in a spot that's really repetitive and boring, if you will. If you're not having a good time at work, if it does cause you stress, you are worth more than that. You're worth more than that, uh, whatever you're getting paid or whatever it is. You're worth more than that job. And so if that's something that is really causing you a lot of trouble, that doesn't mean you need to quit. Just at least first talk to your manager, see if there's something you can do. And most of the time, I guarantee the managers will will be willing to listen to you and be willing to help you out. If you really express and say, hey, like this is something that's really hard for me. And especially on my on my mental health, I can't sleep, I'm having trouble sleeping, or whatever it is, then if they're a good manager, they will take time to listen to you and take time with you to be able to figure out and compromise to create a solution. Yeah. And let's see if you're like me when it comes to burnout, when it comes to specifically with work. In the past, I've had a lot of jobs in the past, like three years, um, for different reasons, obviously. There's a lot of things that have happened in my life, a lot of changes that required me to job hop, yeah. so to speak. But yeah. a lot of it has been burnout. And maybe you guys are like me, where you go through the, those phases of burnout, where something happens at work, it becomes dysfunctional, you get burnt out doing that thing. And... Maybe you're like me in the way that you complain about it a lot. You never bring it up to a supervisor. You let it fester and that resentment builds up to the position that you're in, the responsibilities that you have, maybe some aspect of the company you just don't really like. That builds up over time. You start complaining about to other employees. Now they start to complain. They start to get burnt out. And everyone starts talking about quitting. 
oh, this is the worst company. Why do we work here? Mm-hmm. Let's leave. And it very well could be. But I was going to build off of what you said. If you start to feel those things, the first thing you should do is talk to your supervisor. Talk to your manager. And say maybe you can talk about that with school too. Talk to your professor. Talk to your advisor. Talk to someone. Because if you think about this in the light of like a relationship, say you're in a, a marriage and all these things start building up, like I'm tired of this. This is the worst. I hate my wife. I hate my husband. Yeah. Um, if you go and talk to other people about it and you never talk to your spouse about it, it's only going to get worse It every time. Yeah. I mean, every time. If you put that into the the job circumstances that we're in here, nothing is going to change if you don't talk about it. And so like you said, if they're a good manager, things will change. And if they're not, that's probably a good indication of whether or not it's actually worth it to leave. Right. But you'll never know what you missed out on <laughs> unless you talk about it. So that's a really good start. Talk to someone and be candid about it. Be vulnerable to a supervisor. And that might, might not be an easy thing to do for some people because you've always, maybe you have a pattern of just jumping ship in the past, which again, please don't feel bad if you have, because that's been me too. Um, maybe just try to break that pattern of jumping ship when you start to get burnt out. Maybe try to fix what's going wrong. And that's what I'm dedicated to this new job of mine to just, instead of complaining about it and jumping ship as soon as it gets hard, talk it through. And um, I guess that's what I wanted to go off with that because, yeah. um, yeah, evaluate your circumstances and then talk to someone about it. That's the kind right. of the next And yeah, that goes anyways. right to the next one, which is seek support. So whether you reach out to coworkers, friends, or loved ones, support and collaboration might help you cope. And if you're like me, I don't like talking to people about my issues. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's, yeah, me too. Mo- and most people don't. And so I tend to be more of like kind of secluded and kind of go do my own thing when I'm really stressed. And so I wouldn't, my first reaction isn't, oh, I need to go seek support. You <laughs> Talk know, to my manager about this. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, oh, I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll do it on my own. And in the long run, that's just not helpful. And that's not sustainable. You aren't going to be able to sustain that, especially if this is a job you want to stay at for years, if not make it you know, the job you're going to be at for until retirement. Exactly. You know, and so you want to create that environment and that first starts with seeking support. And that, yeah, that's really what it comes down to is putting the work in to to seeking that help, Um, which leads into another great um, resource. Another good um, suggestion is try a relaxing activity. Explore programs that can help with stress, such as yoga, meditation, and Tai Chi. Um, And for me, it's none of those. It's, uh, I love, I love uh, fishing. I love Frisbee golf. I love golf. I love um, a lot of outdoor activities that just get my mind off of the thing that I'm stressed about. For me, burnout typically comes with school. But yeah, what works for you? What's relaxing for you? Is it sitting in a hammock reading a book? It uh, could be a lot of things. Just find out what that means for you. Yeah, I really enjoy reading. I go to the Temple of Iron, which is the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Getting swole. Yeah, or I play some games with the boys. Oh, yeah. You know, just whatever it is. You, you know what the difference is between you escaping something and you um, healthily enjoying something. Is it an escape? Right, right. Is this a relaxing activity? Am I trying to cope? Am I trying to healthily um, resolve this problem? You know the difference between you. Maybe you don't, but try to focus on what is avoidance and what is a healthy activity that builds you back up. Yeah. Yeah. And th- I mean, the next one is to get some exercise. We can just... We just talked about that. Get some exercise. Get Go up, to the move Temple around. Of Iron. <laughs> Go to the Temple of Iron. We've talked about exercise quite a bit. And in the mental health world, exercise is actually really important. It's huge. Because it's been proven time and time again that it raises your dopamine levels mm-hmm. and it lowers cortisol levels, which cortisol is the stress hormone. And so if you're feeling stressed or you're feeling burnt out, then get up and move. And it doesn't matter what you do, honestly. Just move. It's been proven that at least... Only 60 seconds of a elevated heart rate will actually be able to reduce cortisol levels, increase dopamine levels, give you more energy, and overall, you just have a better attitude about your day. Mm-hmm. And so the funny thing is, though, about burnout is if you are burnt out, if, it, if you're anything like me, you don't want to go work out. Yeah. You don't want to do anything. And so this can be a hard one. Honestly, even though it's simple, it can be really hard, especially when it comes to burnout, but just get up and move. If you're at a desk, get up, go for a drink, go for a walk, and then come back five minutes later. And it can make actually a really big difference. Yeah, absolutely. And the next two things I'll just um, finish off here. The first one is get some sleep. I mean, 
sleep is so important. There's, I mean, again, time and time again, study after study, clinical reviews, systematic meta analysis all show how important sleep is. If you're not getting the appropriate amount of sleep for you, um, and you're doing things that take away from your sleep and your quality sleep, um, that's probably going to be a really good place for you to start. Um, focus on your sleep and getting up on time at a good time every day around the same time and going to bed around the same time every day too is going to, um, that's going to be game changing for you because it's been game changing for me as I was focused on that in the past. And the last one is get into a practice of mindfulness. Not only is that going to calm you down in, in the moment where you're feeling the most stress, but as you practice mindfulness every day, it will help you become more aware of the present moment when you are feeling feelings of, of burnout. And when you're starting to notice those feelings, you can catch them earlier if you have a good practice of mindfulness and it helps you stay anchored to what matters most. We've talked about mindfulness time and time again when it yeah. comes to acceptance and commitment therapy and other mindfulness practices, but it really is a good way for you just to stay grounded to what matters. At the end of the day, it's going to help you focus on things in your life that you can control and things that are within your grasp of, um, of manipulability, I guess, things that you can actually focus on. Um, so yeah, mindfulness, <clears throat> whoa, mindfulness <laughs> is, is huge when it comes to burnout yeah. for so many different reasons. Yeah, I mean, we can't stress mindfulness enough. And like Austin was saying, that's huge in acceptance and commitment therapy. And it's just huge in general to have a good life. Like I, I watched a video yesterday actually about this guy, and we'll probably do a whole episode on this in the mm -hmm. future. But he talks about how rarely do we ever actually have time to just sit in silence on a day-to-day -day basis, especially now with technology. We have our phones. We have, I mean, music at our fingertips and... We always tend to, or we're always plugged in. We're always looking at a screen, always listening to music or whatever it is. And so we rarely have time to actually just sit in silence. And you notice how whether you're laying in bed or you're in the shower, you have these amazing thoughts come to you, shower thoughts, you know? <laughs> Love those. But why? It's because we're not really focused on anything. We're just kind of sitting there. You're just showering. You know, you're yeah. just showering in the water and just chilling. And you have these great thoughts. And so when you actually take the time out of your day to just sit in silence, then he says to, I think his name is Hald. Hald. Interesting name. But he says, just set a timer for five, 10 minutes and just sit there. You can think about whatever you want. Just sit there. Yeah. And just doing that practice alone will help you really have a sense of direction in your life and know what the best thing is for you to do. So maybe you're thinking about quitting the job because you're experiencing burnout. Yeah. But while you're sitting there, just in silence, you have a thought come to you to, oh, maybe I should talk to my manager about mm -hmm. this. You know, when you write it down and you go to your manager and talk about it and everything turns out really well, yeah. you know, and so you keep that job and saves you a lot of stress in the, in the long run. Yeah. Because I mean, no one really wants, I mean, maybe people that have a good mindfulness practice want to be with their thoughts, but, um, I know for me, I don't always want to just be with my thoughts. Um, there's a great song by 21 Pilots called Car Radio. Or like yeah. the songs about someone stealing his car radio and now he has to sit in his car silently as he drives to school, as he drives to work and he hates it. Um, because people, I think generally speaking, don't like that feeling of having right. to like entertain yourself and to be with those thoughts that you've been trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I feel like that's going to be common for people that are getting into a mindfulness practice for the first time in their life, that you're going to want your car radio. You're going to want that distraction, but quite literally you can get in your car and keep that music off. And even just your car drive to work can be a good time for you just to, yeah. Let your thoughts come and go as they please, as Russ Harris puts it in the um, Happiness Trap book, um, to allow yourself to just be with your thoughts. And that might be scary at first. You may not like what comes to mind, but I think, like you said, it's important to um, let those thoughts come so you can finally understand what you've been feeling. Maybe be aware of actually what's going on inside of your mind and what's causing this burnout. Right. And yeah, I guess the, unless you have something else you wanted to put with nope, that. Nope, that's it. I mean, I was just going to read the last part yeah, here. Yeah, exactly what I was going to do. Cool, to close up the episode. Is, um, it says, keep an open mind as you consider the options. Try not to let a demanding or unrewarding job undermine your health. And that just reinforces what we've said a billion times on the podcast, is that you're worth it. You like Your job isn't more important than your mental health. Nothing is more important than your mental health. You first, right? The oxygen mask plane crash going down, mm -hmm. put that mask on yourself first, and then you can help others. And and once you do that, then, then you can start exploring different options for yourself as far as, you know, what you need to do in life and what you need to do 
with this burnout when you actually start just stop and focus on yourself do some self-care get going and and then work from there but no job is worth it if it's something that you really hate you've worked through it you've talked to your manager and you still hate it this is something that you dread going to you wake up in the morning and you think oh another day what what what, what do people say another burnout <laughs> <laughs> another burnout it's it's just not worth it and so you you'll know the best decision that you need to make for yourself and if this is if you know this can be a sign for you if you are looking at quitting your job and you've tried all of these and you it still sucks then just leave mm-hmm. there's something better for you out there and and you'll be okay and just remember you're worth it yeah my concluding remarks <laughs> um in some <laughs> just kidding i'm not writing a paper um, i was just gonna say um along with that i was gonna take somewhat of a jordan peterson approach just for a second go on the flip side of that just for a yeah. second but i was just yeah. gonna say that um you are worth it um don't allow yourself to always be the person last in line at the family parties getting food we've talked about that analogy before are you that person that always puts people first puts others needs before yours even your less important needs in front of your own more important needs try to ease out of that that habit if that's you because it has been me for so long allow yourself to get food first at the family party because you are worth it to do so just like everyone else allow yourself to assert yourself at work because you're worth it to do so to make changes that are necessary for you talk to your manager talk to your supervisor put in the hr complaint if you need to whatever it is <laughs> yeah. you're worth it put in yeah. the work to do so flip side of that you don't have to love your job um I, unfortunately, I think we have this weird mentality in, in the United States and just the world that you have to have a passion for what you do. Unfortunately, I, I don't think people are in the, the position to be doing what they love. Even going to school to be a therapist, that is not what I'm necessarily passionate about. It's not what I love to do in the way that like, I want I, my passion, I would love to be a fly fishing guide. I just think that's a little bit un, <laughs> right. unrealistic for me. I love mental health and I cannot wait to be a therapist. Um, Jordan Peterson, what I was saying, I was going to go his route. He has this quote that says, it is a privilege to do what you love, but it is an obligation to do what you find meaningful. That's cool. So you don't necessarily have to love what you do because to be able to do what you love, that's, that's a huge privilege. Some people do people who play basketball, people who play football, actual fly fishing guides that make a lot of money doing so. (laughs) Um, that's a huge privilege. And it's such a small subset of the population of people that get to do that. Um, maybe you do really love being a teacher. Maybe you really do love working in customer service, which is great. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you. But for a lot of people, it's um, a job is a means of which they get to live their life outside of work, to live a life outside of the eight hours a day. So just remember that because um, you can find meaning in anything that you do as long as it's worth it to do so. Kind of what you were saying. Mm-hmm. There's some things mm-hmm. that just aren't worth it. If you've talked to your manager and nothing changes in it, it sucks for you. Find yourself a new job because you are worth it to do so. But maybe try finding meaning in what you do because that is your obligation. No matter what position you're in life, you are in in life, whatever job you're in, you can find meaning in what you do if you figure out what your values are and live in accordance with them. We do that at our jobs. We both have a value of connecting and helping people. And we have these hour-long calls with the dental practices where we kind of treat them like therapy sessions. A little bit, yeah. In in a way that we... um, we connect with people, listen to their problems, and offer goals and solutions for issues that they have. And I do that every single day, and it helps me get through the day every day. Yeah. So what's the equivalent for you in your job? In, in, your, job, <laughs> in your job, how can you find meaning in what you're doing to maybe minimize burnout and maximize um, your enjoyment of what you do? That's my last thought. Yeah. No, I love that. I mean, the best way to abo- avoid burnout, in my opinion, is to find your values. Go after them. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter what you're doing. You can find your values. You can work towards them no matter what you're doing yeah. no matter the job and even from then if it still sucks like that doesn't mean you can't leave like just go ahead and go leave there's something better for you you're worth it too every yep. single time yeah yep. you're worth it first identify those values go through what we talked about today you don't have to quit right away when something gets hard or when it sucks that's that's life mm-hmm. it's going to be hard it's going to suck sometimes but you can you'll be able to work through it and at the end of the day if it still doesn't work out for you then you can leave. You can really, you have your, your choices here. Mm-hmm. So we hope you learned something new in this episode. If you did leave us a rating and review, 
thumbs up on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, ding, ding, and hit the bell icon to be notified when we... <laughs> uh, <laughs> sound like every other YouTuber. Yeah. Love it. It's my dream, man, to be a YouTuber. If I could choose to be... That's any, your passion. If I could do it over again, it wouldn't be YouTube. And I'm not saying that again, like we were saying, I love therapy and I'm excited. Awesome. I'm excited. so excited. So excited I'm going into the field. But if I could choose a dream job, it would be a DJ. I love it. <laughs> I would be a DJ. <laughs> like, like a huge DJ like Dead Mouse or like Marshmallow where they travel the world and just have raves, dude. That's so, so cool, dude. Yeah. So cool. But at this point, it's just not realistic. It's not feasible. And hey, you know, maybe you'll hear me on SoundCloud one of these days. <laughs> DJ therapy, <laughs> DJ MFT. <laughs> that would actually be cool. That would be pretty would sweet. Be actually. Two things that are super important to you. Love it. That'd be cool. Anyway, we there's not going to be a what about episode this week, and so we will talk to you next Tuesday. Yeah, see you guys. Thanks for listening. What about what about therapy? What about what about therapy? What about what about therapy? Yeah. What about what about therapy? What about therapy? What about, what about therapy? Yeah. What about, what about therapy? What about, what about therapy? What about, what about therapy? What about, what about therapy?